I've covered our closest galactic neighbour, and I've even made a video about our next closest neighbour, Barnard's star. But what lies beyond that? The next closest system to the Sun after that is very strange indeed, and contains not one, but two brown dwarfs. Welcome to Lumen 16. Let's find out more. If you live in the Southern Hemisphere and have a very powerful telescope, point it in the direction of the constellation Vela. Nearby you'll find Lumen 16. It lies just six and a half light years away, only slightly further than Barnard's star. Brown dwarfs are stars that are so dim that they're very difficult to spot from here on Earth. This is the reason that this system was only discovered in 2013. So let's take a closer look at the two stars in this system. Lumen 16A is an L-type brown dwarf. It has a radius slightly smaller than, but a mass 33.5 times more than the planet Jupiter. This means that it's much more dense than the planet and therefore why it's a brown dwarf. Unlike more massive stars, brown dwarfs don't have enough mass to fuse hydrogen to produce their heat and light. They do, however, have enough mass to fuse deuterium, which is an isotope of hydrogen. Even though they're very faint, much too faint to be seen with the naked eye from the Earth, Lumen 16 would actually give off heat and light. It has a surface temperature of about 1000 degrees Celsius, or 1350 Kelvin. It would glow faintly red to our eyes, but has a luminosity of only 0.002% of that of our Sun. Polarimetry studies of the star have suggested that like the planet Jupiter, Lumen 16A has bands. It seems like there are just two or three large bands covering huge sections of the star. The upper atmosphere of 16A will obscure some of the light coming from below, so maybe this place looks like a cross between a star and a gas giant planet. Let's turn our attention to the other star in this pair, Lumen 16B. This is another brown dwarf, but of a slightly different type to its neighbour. 16b is a T-type brown dwarf, which to our eyes would glow faintly magenta or purple. This star is actually slightly larger in diameter than the planet Jupiter, and has a mass 28.6 times as much. It also has a surface temperature of 1210 Kelvin, or about 930 degrees Celsius. Studies seem to suggest that instead of bands as with its sister star, this one has large areas of atmospheric clouds that form a pattern over the upper reaches of the atmosphere, and due to the nature of the atmosphere, the light making it through the clouds would indeed look purple or pink to our eyes. These stars orbit their common centre of mass at a distance of 3.5 astronomical units. That's about the equivalent of the orbit of the asteroid belt in our own solar system and they orbit around each other every 27 and a half years. Brown dwarfs are curious bodies. There are four classes of brown dwarf, with M types being the hottest, and then L, then T, and finally the coolest belong to class Y. As they age, they relatively quickly run out of fuel to keep their fusion fires burning. This means that as they get older, they move through the classes of brown dwarf gradually cooling and dimming. This pair are relatively young in the scale of the universe, being only between 600 and 800 million years old. An interesting aspect of brown dwarfs is as they cool down, the outer layers of the atmosphere become dominated by molecular gases, and these gases can then form clouds. Underneath the clouds, the fires of nuclear fusion are still burning, faintly, but still there. This means that in the gaps in the clouds we can see the naked photosphere burning away. This would give the brown dwarfs a strange mottled appearance. We've actually directly imaged these objects. This image from NASA shows a bright point in the centre, which is in fact the two brown dwarfs together. The resolution was not sufficient to discern each object individually. This second image, again from NASA, was taken by the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer, or WISE, Orbital Telescope. Again, the resolution was not able to distinguish between the objects, 
but a further image taken from the Gemini Observatory in Chile was able to determine that this object was in fact two dim brown dwarf stars. The European Southern Observatory's very large telescope was used to directly image 16b for five hours in 2013. This was enough for a full rotation of the star, which means that this star rotates very, very quickly. This showed dark regions around the middle of the star with brighter regions towards the poles with a mottled appearance elsewhere. This suggests that the darker regions correspond to areas with thicker clouds, obscuring the light from the internal fusion going on beneath. Where there are gaps in the clouds, the light from below is able to shine through. There is one question I haven't touched yet, and that is the possibility of planets. But, before I look at that, just to let you know, I make frequent trips into outer space, deep into inner space and through time. If you fancy accompanying me on my adventures, then don't forget to subscribe and we can go together. So, to the matter of planets. In 2013, the way the brown dwarfs were moving suggested that there was a large planet, more massive than Jupiter, orbiting one of the stars. Subsequent observations initially ruled out a planet with a mass greater than two Jupiters, and then finally discarded the possibility of a planet with a mass of Neptune. This means that in terms of large gas giant planets, we can more than likely say that there aren't any. As for smaller, maybe rocky worlds, well, at the moment we just don't know. Maybe in future we'll find out though. Brown dwarfs form just like any other star, which means that they also may have accretion disks around them from which planets could form. Due to the smaller nature of the gas and dust clouds that form brown dwarfs, this means that the accretion disks are likely to be smaller also, leading to a higher probability of rocky planets rather than gas giants orbiting these stars. It is interesting to think that there may be smaller, even possibly rocky planets orbiting one or both of these strange stars. From the surface of any planets in the vicinity, the stars would look interesting and the dim light they cast would give the whole world an eerie glow. Sunlight wouldn't be as we know it here on Earth, it would look strange and coloured and shadowy. The interior of a brown dwarf is in a highly convective state, with energy moving through the star like the bubbles in a pan of boiling water. This combined with the rapid speed of rotation of most brown dwarfs means that the magnetic fields near the surface may be highly tangled and this could lead to huge X-ray flares producing as much radiation as our own sun. Any planets in the vicinity will be bathed in massive amounts of lethal radiation. Well, we haven't travelled far this time, so it won't be a long journey back for us, so let's come back to our own solar system. I'm planning on taking future trips to some more of our near neighbours, but until then, thank you for watching. Many of the stars that we could see will be in a very similar position to how they would look from Earth. If we look towards the constellation of Monoceros, we would see an additional bright star in the night sky. That's our sun. The whole of our civilizations and history is just there in that bright speck of light.